Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to A Healthy Days of Fran or The Best Damn Camp if you're listening on the podcast. Uh, this is a very special episode slash video because I have, well, the mother of all mothers really joining me on the, on the channel. And I, I am very honoured to have her here. Some of you may know her before. She was the mother of all monsters from shows like The Fosters. But most of you, because of what my channel and podcasts are based, will know her as a Kidna from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I have the fantastic, the like I said, the mother of all mothers, Suzanne Cryer on the channel to talk about the show. And I am thrilled. Suzanne, seriously, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. It's fun. I love talking about the show. And it's nice that... Um... There's so much enthusiasm out there um, and debate sometimes too, which is good. Anything that has people talking, what you want is you want your audiences excited and you want them talking. And so all talk is good talk. So I enjoy even the people that um, have objections or make lists and, you know, May, my list may not be the top top of the, my my episode might not even be the top one that doesn't bother me like I agree with a lot of it like I'll be like oh yeah I agree with you know I, I like the the fans and the super fans um and their energy towards the show and their enthusiasm mm -hmm. for this series and how excited everybody was when we got a series two renewal which oh, I knew we were I mean I knew we were <laughs> getting from the first day I went on set it wasn't <laughs> and it wasn't any mystery to me but um but I was glad that uh Disney finally uh piped up and said it's happening so. <laughs> yes and I'm pretty sure everyone watching will 100% agree it's like yes yeah. season two bring yeah. it on <laughs> no, but uh, season two is gonna be cool oh yeah uh, I, I've said it before to a bunch of people but Sea of Monsters is one of my favorite books from the series it's usually my like polarized thing they love Sea of Monsters yeah. Oh, okay. I'm so glad to hear someone else say that because it's usually the one that, in like the people who've read the books, it's usually the one most people dis like not dislike, but it's like really? at the bottom of the ranking. Most people are not the biggest fan of it, and that's I that's weird. My no, my kids are really into it, so they said they're super excited for next year because they just want to see how they make it happen. So, okay, your kids are awesome. Just like bona fide at this. <laughs> I can, I can just um, love reading, and my kids love. They just they love the series. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it was part of their childhood. So it's it was really exciting for them because most of the shows I do are not um, are not necessarily geared towards kids. They still like them. They enjoy them. Mm. But something that's so much part of their childhood, it was fun to be actually be in it. Oh, yeah, I, I can imagine that. It's just yeah. the bragging rights I'm sure they have are just like my mom's. A kid yeah, now. no, I've been going into a lot of elementary school classrooms. I just did one on Wednesday and I did one the week before where I go in and like read a story and talk about being on Percy Jackson. It's really exciting for the kids. I'm, I'm always happy. I used to teach and I spent a lot of my time, probably as much, as much or more time um, working in public schools, just helping out in public schools and doing advocacy mm -hmm. as I do acting. So I love being in the classroom and, um, and whenever teachers ask me to come in, I'm happy to. Oh, well, that's amazing to, to hear. Um, but to kind of like really obviously getting to the myth, uh, I can't think of the phrase now. The the itty gritty. That's not actually the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. That's it. Oh my lord. Uh, I am a demigod. I am dyslexic. So <laughs> just excuse any. That's <laughs> power. No, Rick knows that. That's why he wrote the books. I've told. I, I talked about that in the, the the discussion in class the other day. I said, you know, he had this son with with learning differences, and he wanted to make the kid feel powerful, and 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 it's who he is. So. Yeah, and it's brilliant. I love it so yeah. much. But uh, yes, into the nitty gritty. Um, so just in general, just like when you heard that you had gotten the role of a kidna, how like how would you say like you prepared for the character? Did you kind of like read your lines? In, like what direction did you want to take the portrayal so, of a kidna? So right away I knew that it was different than the book because in the book she's not filled out that much. Um, she sort of mm -hmm. is... Um, uh, a large, a large lady, you know, that you see her in the elevator with this. And she kind of has this, she, you know, she reminds you a little bit of um, who's that horrible lady in Harry Potter that comes towards the end that, you know, who I'm talking about. Oh, Dolores Umbridge. Yes. She reminds you of Dolores Umbridge, the way Rick describes her. And I think they wanted, I think Rick wanted to do something really different in the show um, and make it, um, 
make her a little bit more complicated, I think, given that she is so powerful and that she can appear anyway. So the, the manifestation that you see her in in this episode is definitely a manifestation. But as all the kids know, that's not what echidna really looks like. The real echidna is is monstrous and has like a snake body and, and, um, and like the, you know, heads that can bite at the end of these snake legs. And, um, so when I found out that I got the role, obviously I was super excited because my kids are super fans of the, of the, um, series and they really, (laughs) they normally don't care what shows I get, but they really wanted me to get this one. Um, and then, um, I right away was told that I was going to have a meeting with the two executive producers, not Rick, but um, with the guys who run and, and write the show and um, Dan and, and John. And, uh, and it's unusual actually to have a meeting beforehand because um, I mean, I'll go into shows where I'm like in every episode a lead and I don't have meetings beforehand. You just kind of get the job and you show up and you do it, but they really wanted to talk and I love them so much. They're so great. They're so smart and they care so much. They didn't hire Um, And I say this with all due respect to kids programming, but they didn't hire like kids show people. They hired these guys did, you know, they're, they're currently filming the old man season two. These guys do adult shows and, um, and uh, with Jeff Bridges, which is amazing, you know, and so they wanted to have that sensibility. They wanted to have adults in the room. And I think my experience teaching and mothering and, um, and working on shows is that, kids are the same as adults. They like adult fair. I mean, they do love the myth and they love all that stuff, which grownups like too, but they don't want to be talked down to. And so I feel that it was wise of them to hire people that would treat it um, as something that would be fun to watch for kids and for adults. They didn't want it to just be like, you know, crazy Disney, you know, they, they weren't looking for that, which there's nothing wrong with that material, but you know, my, my kids don't really like watching the, the wacky broad acting Disney shows. They never, even when they were little, were into it. And they've always gravitated more towards shows that feel like they have a little oomph. Mm. And so um, I think it's nice to know that, um, you know, my kids who are now, um, my son was home from college. He's, he was 18 and my kids were, four, my twins are 14. They all loved the show. Like they loved the show. This isn't for nine-year-olds or eight-year-olds or whatever. This show is, and I I loved it. And my husband sat there riveted. So it's really great family viewing. Um, But this is a long answer to your question. (laughs) I was very excited. I met with them. And so I was very curious, like, am I going to be this big monster with all these, you know, how are they going to, I was very excited because I've always wanted to be on Star Trek. That's like, I've always wanted to be, I've never even had an audition for any of them, but I've always wanted to, and I've always wanted to be like an alien. So I thought, now's my chance. I'm going to get to wear prosthetics and get to be a monster. Nope. But, you know, the reason they did it is so smart. It's that I mean, probably a lot of your, I don't know whether a lot of your viewers know Alfred Hitchcock, but Alfred Hitchcock, who is this great, you know, director um, from decades ago who who did Psycho and The Birds and 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 all these movies that were kind of defined what scary movies were he didn't do what we do now like in saw where we show people hacking each other up on camera Mm -hmm. all of the violence happens off screen and because al it's partly because it was a different time period but it's also partly because alfred hitchcock understood something fundamental which is that your imagination is scarier than anything you see because once you see it you've seen it that's it But your imagination, Mm. that's why movies like Are You in the House Alone, where you don't see anything for the 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 mounting terror, that's really scary. And I think they felt because they were going to show other monsters in the movie, like Electo and, you know, and my kid and all the other, they're going to show, they're going to show monsters. But my character's so powerful, they didn't even want to show her. They'd rather have her be so scary a monster that you don't even see it. That whatever you imagine in your scary version of what a monster is, that's what I am. Because Echidna is back before all those other monsters. And she's back before the gods. 
She's mm. up there with Kronos. She's up at that time period. She's, she's, you know, child of Gaia. She's, you know, from the beginning. So she's older than Zeus. She's older than, um, than Hermes and, and, and these other gods. She's, she's got to be strong and she's got to be scary. And they would almost diminish her by giving me a couple snakes. Mm. Um, I'm not saying they'll never do that. If I come back, they might show me in monster form. But for this, they just wanted me to scare the heck out of the kids as like a soccer mom, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love that as well, because it's very much like what you're saying. It's just like, and also just kind of like, what was it? They usually show the, um like, was it in, um, like shows like the Fosters and stuff like that as well. They would have had the passive aggressive soccer mom types as well. Yeah. Yeah. And like, oh. and, yeah. And normal people can be scary as well. Like it's the, it's the energy about you. Normal that, people are yeah. scary. I mean, we'll mm. look what's happening in our country. Normal people are scary. They're the people mm. that are scary. Monsters aren't doing anything to us. And yeah. you know, that's the other, it's, it's people, <laughs> you know, it's, it's people, um, uh, who, who get small and mean and, um, mm. and, you know, that's one of the things I really loved about, they did change the way Echidna was represented from the book to the movie, mm. to the series. And I think what Rick and the, and the, the other two producers were hoping to explore is it's philosophical. Like mm. what, what do you mean when you say monster? Mm. We're all from the same people, you know, we're all, we're all from the same family tree. So mm. why am I a monster and you're not? And I think um, the same issues that Rick was exploring with Percy Jackson of trying to make, you know, a child with learning differences feel included. He also is continuing to explore with this. Like, why, why do we want to make people other, right? Mm. Like, why is it that that's like, and, and, and so he calls the kids on it and he, and, and, and in the form of me saying monster, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting term. Like, I, I actually think I'm a better mother than your parents who all just tossed you out and ignore you. I'm with my kids. I take care of my kids. And I actually think you guys are causing more destruction in the world than, than the monsters are. And, you know, this mm -hmm. idea of what is a monster and why, am, why am I a monster? I love that it got in the middle of this, like, you know, this action show, it got really philosophical about that. And I think it's a really cool thing to think about. Oh, one hundred percent. That's something like I personally love from it as well because that is explored later in the series to a degree, but it's never right. dived into enough so to see that in the show with Medusa in episode three and then yourself. Right, in exactly. Four They're as well. really like giving you the other side of this, and mm. um, I love that. I just think anything that that can make you have fun while you're doing some thinking too is really great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the portrayal really comes across like when you are asking that question of like, who's the real monster? Who's the real monster like, here? Yeah. yeah. And what is, you know, what is, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting stuff. So for, for me, um, I've said no to kids shows before I've done, you know, and some I've been interested in and some I haven't been, but this, I was like, this, it doesn't read like a kid's show. Like when I got the script, I was like, this, this feels like any other show that I do. The writing was, was great. The writing was great. It didn't seem like it was catered towards kids. And I love that because mm -hmm. I have respect for my kids. I try and treat them as much as I can like adults. It doesn't mean that they don't have rules and stuff like that, but I try to intellectually engage with them and have discussions with them about the same thing that I would have with my friends. Mm. You no, know, I want them to be thoughtful adults. And so I have thoughtful, I think thoughtful discussions can start when you're in first grade. Like, you know, so I'm I'm glad that this show has something for everyone. It you know it has fun stuff with swords and 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 fighting monsters, but it also has thoughtful discussion, which is going to be more appealing to some of the older kids and and teens and adults. So, mm. I know a hundred percent, and I, that definitely came across, and like especially in the Medusa and uh, your episode as well. It's very much like you can tell that there is a respect towards the younger audience and the older audiences yeah. as well. And it makes you think and you love a show that makes you think beyond what's like being shown to you on 
on yeah, the screen. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I suppose because you've kind of mentioned this a little bit about the fact that your kids uh, love the series as well. Like, did you know how big the series was in terms of the books and all that stuff when you accepted the role? Yeah. And did that affect the way you approached the character of Echidna? You know, I did know how big it is. I really did. And I knew how big the series was probably going to be because I could just tell. I mean, it, first mm. of all, they're spending a lot of money on it. And you can tell it shows. It's an expensive show. It looks like an expensive show. It doesn't look like a cheap, cheap, you know, green screen kind of stuff. It looks really fancy. Um, and, uh, you know, and I got to see the first two episodes for the first time at the Met, at the premiere which was incredible in between all the like, you know, ancient Roman and, you know, Greek and Egyptian architecture and vases. And like, it was crazy seeing it in this big, beautiful theater. Um, so I did know it was going to be really, really big. Um, but, you know, my, I think I can't speak to why they, they offered me the role, but um, I think they liked the, that I didn't try and play this idea of a monster. And that I played it more as a, um, I mean, she's scary, but I think she's scary because of the fact that she wants to kill them, but she's a real person. Mm. So I think that's what makes it scary. Because if you're just like, I'm going to get you, there's kind of, mm. we've all seen that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you're never going to be better than Margaret Hamilton in Wizard of, the, uh, in Wizard of Oz. So you got to find a new way of doing it, right? <laughs> So I try to kind of approach it from, uh, uh, you know, from a, a mom standpoint, like she, this is a mom mm -hmm. and she sees these three kids. I mean, yes, she wants to kill these three kids, but the reality is guys, I could have killed them. Like I could literally just kill them on the, the obviously I could kill those mm -hmm. three kids on the train. Um, so I didn't choose to, I think that's very important. I let my child mm -hmm. hunt them and, um, and I wouldn't have been upset if, 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 you know, they had successfully been killed, Percy specifically. Um, but I also, I think she's fine that they, that he's not dead. I think mm. she knows she can do that at any moment. I think she was sending a message more than anything. I mean, I do think she thought, I don't know. I don't know whether, I think she knew he might have a good chance of surviving, but I think mm. she wanted to scare the hell out of him. Yeah. Really, really make him really radically rethink. And I probably might come back. If I come back, I'm probably going to try and come back to finish him off. So you know, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, my <laughs> children, because my children are, you know, they're, my children are everywhere because I'm kind of, you know, depending on which sources you read of Greek mythology, a lot of the monsters are my babies. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, the monsters, they're, they're always about. Um, yeah, they're whether or not they're about. monsters. <laughs> always about. <laughs> um, but I suppose... Um, for going to the next question i have a feeling i may know what it is because of the conversation we had earlier but if you could pick like a favorite line or moment from your episode what would it be and why so i mean it's hard because i, I there's a lot of lines i like <laughs> i really the, the thing that made me want to get the part was when i saw that at the very end she says yeah, you should run now because <laughs> I just, I loved that. I was like, that's so funny and so scary. Um, but I really, I really like the top also when she's talking about, um, you know, monsters. It's funny. We're all from the same family. I love that. But I can't, there's nothing better than saying you should run now. <laughs> like with a smile on your face. Like I'm about to kill you. So you better run. So. <laughs> I just love that line. It, as soon as I read that line, I laughed and I was like, oh my God, I have to get this part. So I can imagine. And just, I mean, how can she be a monster? She gave them a head start. I mean, that's nice. I did give them a head start from a little chihuahua. Just a little chihuahua. <laughs> oh, okay. Speaking of the chihuahua, how was it working with your co star, the chihuahua? Well, I did not work with the dog. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Awesome. And they do the dogs on set because you never actually saw the dog like in my lap or anything like that. So mm. I worked with the monster. So I worked with like with 
you know, like fake parts of the monster. And I worked mm. with the bag, um, which was all robotics. Um, but the doggy works with her trainers or his trainers. I don't know whether it was a boy or a girl. I saw the dog on set very <laughs> cute. But the problem is like people go, when there's a, when there's an animal actor on set, and I've worked with many animals mm -hmm. over the years. Like we would have some on two guys and a girl, which some of, some of, it's an old show, but people still watch it nowadays. Cause it's got Ryan Reynolds and, and <laughs> Nathan Fillion. Um, we would have animals all the time. And um, you are not now allowed near that. There's all these rules because they're trained. Mm. They don't want to jam up these dogs or cats or llamas or whatever. So sometimes they'll let you pet them a little, but they're always like, they're very, they're very bossy with the animals because they're like, you know, this is a highly paid trained animal. And it's true. Like the dog just did their stuff. Like doesn't wander off and start smelling things or like you know, the dog knows what the dog is doing because mm. they only use dogs on sets that are really, really good at what they do. Like really trained. Yeah. So yeah, I, didn't, I didn't spend much time with the Chihuahua. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose just slightly rephrase the question then, because you mentioned um, about um, the physical form for the monstrous form of um, your child. What was it kind of like? Like, was it like a mixture of like not practical effects, but like having something physical that you could see and be able to move around with? Yeah, not you know, there's not very much. It's mostly left to an actor's imagination. But they did have like parts of the head and parts of like a. a a foot, you know, so that I, so that I could place my hand in the right places and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because, and they told me, they described to me what they're like, so that I would know in my head what I was dealing with, how big mm -hmm. this, this child is, how, you know, what, how scary um, it looks. And basically just like letting me, um, you know, letting me know how to interact with it. But, but, mm -hmm. but it's, I would have guides little pieces of the monster to guide me so that when I'm mm -hmm. walking with it or, 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 or near it or laying my hand on it, I knew, but very little of it. It's really um, mostly your imagination work, you know? Ah, oh, okay. That's interesting. I like, I obviously not because it was all, it, that was one of the last things done. They had like the whole episodes, like at, edited before they because they wanted these things to look so real in the show. Mm. They wanted, you know, when, when, um, uh, like the whole fighting, the fighting in episode, was it one or two when he fights outside of the, the camp? Mm. Oh yeah. Episode one. Yeah. Yeah. It's episode one. Like I get confused, which is which, but no, like, you're all good. <laughs> when he's riding him and like, like that stuff, it's all mm. done, you know, aft in post. So, um, it's it's really you have to use your imagination you really do like what walker's mm. doing in that that's like not easy it's not easy mm. to really look like you're working with something that's not there it's not like fighting a big man it's different when you're fighting aries he's there and he's big mm. <laughs> it's easy to be scared of aries but it's it's harder when you're working with styrofoam and and you know like a saddle without something in it you know mm. Yeah. That is very interesting to know. Um, hopefully in future, I know obviously you won't be able to interact. Um, you'll be able to interact with the animal, be able to see them. Uh, if maybe yeah, we have I mean, you know, it's, like I don't know how much more they built of it, how much of it is CGI, and how much you know, it's all mm. like it's so complicated, so expensive, and so complicated. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I suppose the, you know, using the imagination, that is the actors think everything you're working for me it's better like if i had some mm. sort of like sort of fake looking thing there next to me that mm. doesn't help put me in the, it's better if i just use my imagination like my imagination oh. is, like it's more powerful it's more mm. real because they there is no such thing as a monster so yeah. anything they have is going to look fake i mean i know that like you know when they made et they mm. kept E.T. like alive all the time for when Drew Barrymore would go over and like talk to it because she was so little. They wanted it to be very real for her. Um, so like anytime Drew would walk over like during lunch break, they would have the puppeteer like interact with her with E.T. Um, but, you know, for adults, I think we don't live in that world where, mm. where uh, we're going to believe that. E.T. is real. 
So I think it's better for me. I'm going to see the plastics or the joint, you know, I'm going to see what's not real about it. I'd rather just use my imagination where it can be totally real. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, guess yeah, so you get, you get to see your child on screen anyway. So proud <laughs> mother moment. <laughs> it, was, it did look like they described it, but better, but it, it looked like how Dan Schatz described it to me. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. That's what, that's even better. That's just almost like a match for match. For, yeah, no, it was. Like, he was. He did a good job describing it to me. He's like, this is because he was so excited because he knew he knew all the like pictures and this, you know, and they showed me mm. some pictures. So it was cool. Well, that it, it does sound part good. of because when you're an actor, you're also part of the making of, right? Mm. Like, it's not just like you're the role, you're also like behind the scenes. So you're getting to see how they're making all this stuff. Yeah. It's fun. No, it sounds great. I can just imagine just like just seeing all the stuff being made and just all that yeah. sort of stuff. It's like different when you do like when I do a normal TV show, we're just, you know, we're doing scenes and then we cut and then they put it together. But I know what it is. But this is mm. different because so much of it was constructed and 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 added effects and mm. just it was very it's you know, it's it's like working on a Star Wars movie. It's a huge, huge, you know. Yeah. No, I can well, I can't imagine, but like it sounds amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, the screens are like 50 feet, 40 feet tall, whatever. They're like these huge screens. Like it's insane. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. yeah the, depth, the depth stage they built on mm. the lot was like uh, inside the inside the um inside the um the studio is mm. huge, huge the wow. screen where the train was. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow, that does sound really, really cool. Um, and it sounds like you had a really good time on set, which is always like really nice so to hear that people. The kids are so, so nice, so nice. The nicest, nicest kids and the nicest executive producers and the craft service, which is where they give us food, the best I've ever had. The best I've ever had on any set anywhere. It was nonstop, like everything from, you know, like Japanese mochi ice creams and cupcakes to like, you know, meatball wedges and sushi. It was just nonstop. Like <laughs> it, it was crazy. It was crazy. You, well, I, yeah. I was there as much as Walker. I, I can't believe Walker didn't get incredibly fat because you just want to eat that stuff. There's like, there's Better things than you like. Oh, do, would you like a poke bowl now? How now we're having a hot fudge Sunday thing. Now we're doing fresh made pizza. I mean, it's like I <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, just because we're mentioning food, did you ever get yourself some blue food, some blue cupcakes, or anything like that? You know, they personal? had blue stuff there while I was there. They always would. You know, they had blue stuff around. Mm. So there's, but like I didn't like. They had some days where they had like a big blue cake and stuff. Like I don't remember that. That <laughs> it's hard for me to remember. But there was, there were. They always did celebrate in that way. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that I didn't know from my kids that that was such a big thing. That was something I found out. Ah, okay. Oh, I can just imagine just it's like, why is that so much blue food about? <laughs> like, why, why is there so much blue? <laughs> but the crew, the crew guys are working really long, hard days and they don't want to have just blue food. So they're, they're, they want their <laughs> teriyaki bowls and things like that. I can imagine after a while, we're like, oh, like your yeah. tongue's turned blue. Like it's yeah. going to be blue for months if that's what you're <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I know it sounds great and like it is just really nice to hear from like fan perspectives as well that it was just such a nice environment as well because like you Super always want that for the actors and the yeah, crew no I mean well. really nothing negative on that set really positive the kids just are playing with each other even when they're not on camera it's just, they're so nice I was chatting with they, you know I just chat with them and they're just sweet 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 kids I mean they're not little kids yeah. they're 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 people, you know, I felt I was working with professionals. They were professionals. They were really, you know, Walker's got a big movie under his belt already. And then, you know, now he's, he's a real pro. He just, he'll hang from a strap 40 feet in the air for eight hours and he won't complain. I mean, he's a real trooper. Wow. Yeah. Uh, major props. <laughs> yeah. No, he really, he's really, really, it's why these, the crew love them all so much because they mm -hmm. really were easy to work with these kids. So, yeah, all That's of them. Great. All of them. They're all. Each one is nicer than the next. They're just also nice and bright. They're smart. They're hardworking. They're good actors. They're really great kids.
but that's yeah that's all really great to hear but i and i suppose kind of like in regards to like obviously fans hearing about all these sort of things as well um is there anything that you would particularly like to say to the fans of Percy Jackson and their love for you and your role as a kid and for the show? Well, the only thing I'd like to say is I'm um, keep up the energy. I know they're going to have to keep the momentum going towards it because it's going to be a long time before season two. I mean, it is. Um, so don't forget um, because uh, maybe, you know, wait like six months and then watch it again. And um, because I think that'll help keep the energy there. Um, and I also, you know, want to say to them that I just want to keep reminding everybody that, you know, Rick didn't have anything to do with the movies when they were made, but Rick mm. is very, very involved. Like he was there on set most of the days when I was there um, and I was talking to him, Rick, this is Rick's vision with these two producers. So when they make changes and when they're, um, you know, they're being very faithful to the book, but they are doing some things differently. It's because Rick wants to. So um, uh, this all has the, the the Rick seal of approval. And I just want people to keep that in mind that sometimes there are reasons you have to make some changes and sometimes you can make things better. Sometimes people might think they made something worse and that's fair. You're allowed to, everybody's allowed to have their opinion, but I just would like them to remember um None of this be, is being done without Rick's, you know, mm. two thumbs up. So, well, I'm sure that'll be very reassuring for some fans as well, and also an explanation for any who may have been confused about some changes. Um, yeah. but, I know people. Yeah. People don't want anything different, but you know, you can't look when you like when they made Harry Potter, and she really, you know, my understanding is she really micromanaged it and made sure they really kept to the book. But you can't half of it's still missing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to choose what you do and choose where you explore. And, you know, it's, you can't, you can't get everything in and you can't, you know, there's, it's a book is different than a movie or a TV show. So it's You're going to have to make some alterations and hopefully it makes it kind of more fun because then it's two different things. You can love the book and you can love the series and they're, they complement each other. They're the same world. They're, approved by the same creator but they're a little bit different you know yeah and yeah that's the whole thing that people say as well because obviously we have um there's the lightning thief musical as well so we've got three persons we've got three annabeths we've got all the kinds of characters that we would like all the different variations and they're all just as perfect just as valid and yeah i think people like hearing this as well will help people but yeah, that's just how, like how it is. Everything is always slightly different, but it's it's nice to hear that Rick was involved and like you got to speak with him as well. Like, oh gosh, great. yeah, it was like I. It was really for me. It was very exciting to be able to <laughs> talk to him, honestly, because yeah. you know he's a superstar, and I really, you know, anybody. He was a teacher. I love teachers, and I love anybody that does things for kids and yeah. and is helping kids live their best lives i mean he really cares a lot so it's just anyway yeah, yeah. and i'm sure you got some uh good brownie points with your children as well for oh honest. yeah rick, <laughs> rick you know my first day there um he left like i talked to him for like an hour and then he then he left and he comes back and he brings me three copies of lightning thief signed for each of my kids wow yeah. Oh, Just wow. Nice he knew he knew he didn't want to give me one for them to share. He's like, they each should have one. So he, how he's such a good guy. My yeah. kids were thrilled. They were just thrilled. I was like, you guys keep that. That's special. <laughs> Daddy Wick gave you, gave you a, 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 your own signed copy. So, you know, he, he's a good man. Yeah. He really loves kids. I mean, obviously you don't go into teaching if you, if you don't love kids and and he's a parent, so it's it, yeah. it comes out in everything he does. So, yeah, well, that's that's amazing, and that's also that's so nice as well. Um, but I I think that's kind of all for my questions as well. You've okay, had some incredible answers, and uh, it's been amazing speaking with you and just hearing everything. Well, that it's my, it's you've honestly heard. my pleasure, and um and thank you, thank you for setting this up, and um and I hope. Uh, Everybody be patient until season two arrives. Yeah. It's, and, take um, a it's a big show. It's going to take a little time. 
Oh yeah, and uh, guys, be sure to do a hashtag on Twitter to get a kidna back. I mean, yes. we need. Yeah, more I Sudan. hope kidna comes back. I know <laughs> she's not in this in the store in the um, actual books, but she is there in spirit because she's the mother of monsters, and so mm. I think there's a chance that she'll be back. Um, it's not going to change the storyline or anything like that, but it's possible that in some capacity, but I, I don't know how that would work, but fingers crossed. <laughs> so many fingers crossed. Everyone watching, everyone listening, fingers crossed, hashtags. Yeah. I mean, yes. come Hopefully, on. <laughs> yes. Bring a kid in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag bring a kid in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I hope. Yeah. All right. Thank you yeah. so much. It's been lovely talking to you. No, it's been amazing as well. And, um, yeah. Everyone, be sure to follow Suzanne. Be sure to check out everything that she's done career-wise as well. If, uh, uh, if well, if you have the access to it, because I've got, I need to watch. I, I remember watching you on the Fosters as well. I was kind of like when I saw you yeah, as a kid. I was like, oh my god! Valley, if you haven't, anybody who likes tech should definitely watch Silicon Valley because it's oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's one of the best shows ever made. It really is very different than Percy Jackson. <laughs> a lot more staring <laughs> and drugs, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, a very smart show. Uh, Mike Judge just makes really great stuff. Um, uh, and oh, yeah. uh, I still do voices for him on Beavis and Butthead now. But he's just a really great, uh, he's a really great guy, Mike Judge. Yeah, amazing. But uh, yeah, guys, do be, be sure to go do all that. And remember the hashtag bring a kidna back on yes. all social media. Um, and yeah, Suzanne, seriously, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. To it's my me. pleasure. My pleasure.